Okay, so this week I thought I would give you a video cast of what's actually expected in this week's lab so you can have a go at it uh, before you actually get there or if in fact for some reason you can't make the uh, alternative scheduled labs then this will at least give you an idea of how to attack the lab activity because it is a little bit conceptual and might take you a while to try and wrap your head around it. So I uploaded the lab activity to the Facebook page. So you go there and you click and you download it. Okay, you'll end up with this. So one of the things we're doing is we're doing a physics teacher task. So in, in high school we have these physics problems. And these physics problems consist of, if we just go down to what they look like, basically if the voltage is 200 volts, so usually U equals 200 V, and the current is I equals 4.5 amps, how much power is generated? So every one of these prob every one of these lines effectively makes up a problem that we need to solve. So every line here in this you know sample input here is in fact a line. Oh, well, sorry, is in fact a problem. So we effectively need to go and create a um, class to represent this problem. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just I'm not actually going to go through and create it. I'm just going to show you how I might go about and actually design it. So I'm going to use OmniGraffle Pro and use the UML features inside OmniGraffle Pro. So what we want is we want a class and we're going to call this class problem. Okay, and that problem class will effectively represent every single uh, line of that file because every line in that file pretty much makes up a problem and the way we're going to read that file is we're not going to use any file uh, objects or anything like that we're just simply going to use a scanner and we're just going to pipe the file into our Java program and the scanner will simply go through grab a line out and using every line so using something like a next line um, method and pretty much create a um, problem object for each line inside that class so that Pretty much the, the problem is going to consist of a, uh, I guess, the line of text, which I guess we could call a description of the problem. And that line of text will be of type string. Okay, so that's going to be our field inside this class. So let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so what do we want to be able to do with this problem? So what are the two things we're going to need to be able to do? All right, well, obviously we're going to need to be able to create a problem object. So we're going to need a constructor of this of some kind to create this problem with and that constructor will in fact require the string so i'll call it desk it's in description and it'll actually require that entire line of text to be passed to it for the constructor for an order for it to actually create this problem that defines it so what else do we want to be able to do with it so obviously we want to be able to create it the other thing we might want to be able to do with it is we want to solve these problems okay so the other method we're going to provide here will in fact be the a solve method okay and the solve method has no arguments because everything it needs to solve it will already be in, inside that string inside the inside the actual problem itself so we're going to solve that and what it's going to return me will actually be um, something that says you know what what the missing quantity is so it'll probably say something like it's like we we're told to find the power or the current or the voltage or whatever it will simply be an object of that kind. So we can call this, I guess, an element. Okay, and we'll have to describe that a bit bit more detail later on. So when we tell it to solve it, it returns us back an element. So there's the two things we actually need to be able to do with the problem. Okay. So if we go back to the actual thing, we'll look at each problem and we'll say, hey, each problem does in fact inside here actually have these two things here of importance these two bits here are the two important things these are basically everything else apart from these two bits here is just irrelevant text that we don't even need to even be aware of what it actually says because if we've got a, a voltage and we've got a current well then we have to find the power or if we've been given the power and we're given the voltage then we've got to find the other one which is a current so everything else on these lines is just junk okay and you'll notice that the thing about these two components is they have an equal sign in them. So about the only thing on this line that has an equal sign in it is this 
word or, or the sub portion of text and you can say it's like a word because there's space in front of it space after it or a comma after it and nothing in between so extracting that like word component i guess you could say would actually be extracting out this particular element so we've got a, a problem which consists of these two subcomponents that we actually need which are the element and it's by these elements that we can then um, solve it okay so we're going to need another object called an element okay so these two are going to be an element so I'll go back here and we'll create another class and we'll call it an element. Okay, and before we populate this, let's just look at how does this actually relate to this problem class. Okay, so it's an association. They're associated, okay? But how are they actually going to be realized inside that problem class? So that problem class, every problem has two elements okay so let's label them so let's say it's so lowercase le1 and le2 are the two local reference so inside the problem class they're going to be two local um, fields called le1 le2 which are going to be of type element so those two fields inside that problem are actually going to be turned into Basically, the, uh, basically going to be this element object here. So what does that element object actually consist of? So it consists of pretty much a type to say whether it's, you know, current, voltage, or power. So there'll be a little type thing, which will be of type string. Or it could even be just a char because, you know, it's either U, I, or V. So we could uh, even, you know, just to shrink, you know, make it a little bit less con uh, memory consuming, we could even make it a char, okay? And the other thing we have in there is each one of those things has a value, right? It has a, a number. So let's create, and we might even make these private because that's usually the way we do it. So we've got a, a, a number. So let's call it a value. All right, so we've got a value, and it looked very decimally to me, so we'll say it's a double. So they're the two fields we need for an element. All right, so what do we need to do with the element? So with the element, I think we're going to need to at least be able to create an element. So we're going to need a constructor for the element to create it. And when we create the element, I think we're going to have to pass in that little substring, that little chunk of thing that says u equals 200v or i equals 4.5a or p equals 200w or something like that. We'll have to pass that little substring in there. So let's call it, I don't know, sub a substring and it's of type string and that's effectively what we're going to need to be able to create this component quite successfully all right so now we've uh done that um what so what are we going to need to be able to do with this element component here all right so we're going to need to be able to i don't know get that value so we're going to need to get value Okay, no arguments, and it's going to return us a double. Okay, what else are we going to need to do? We might need to actually um, get the type. Okay, so we can get the type of the particular component here. All right, and what else might we want to do? Oh, let's say, you know, let's get the unit. So like whether it's a milli, milli uh, an amp, a volt, a, a watt, or whatever. Okay, and that will probably give us back a char. So that's pretty much going to give us back um, the um, unit that goes along with it. Okay. Okay, let's see. All right, so maybe we need another field there to hold that. All right. Okay. So we might need another one, let's call this unit, and it's going to be a type char. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of what we need. Okay, so we're going to have another class, obviously, around this, which is going to be our main class. Now let's call it something like solver, okay? And it's, it's a main class, so we're not really going to have any fields. And we're going to have like one operation in it, which will be our public 
main uh, public main uh, pu public static void main args string uh, let's return a void and it's going to be it's a static so we'll underline that there we go so that's our main class and there's an association between this and our problem okay so let's now explain what's actually going to take place with this so this is our uml that describes this problem that we're going to actually attack so so when it comes to implementing this we implement it from the bottom up so we'll implement an element first and then we'll test an element with say we'll create a main class called like test element class and then we'll test that our element actually works okay so we might just do something like as simple as go uh you know um you know element le equals new element and then inside that because the arguments put a string that says i don't know u equals 200 w close close that quote and that will create an element an, an element object that we can then use called le and then we could then say print that object and see if it prints out nicely so remember that if we actually want to be able to print an object we're going to require another method here okay so we're going to require also a to string method okay and that to string method will basically allow us to print out that object okay so we've got a to string method here so now if i go uh put like the so i create an element object called ellie if i put that reference ellie inside a print line statement as an, like, as an argument into a print line statement, it will then run the toString method and print that object out as an actual uh, string. So we might also want to be able to do that with the problem as well. Um, well, I guess I guess if we see the other beauty is of making the le have the toString method, which means I can now print an, an sorry the element object have the toString method it means now I can print an element object. So you'll see that the problem class when I run the solve method will actually return me an element. Okay, which means if I just simply printed out the result of this um, problem dot solve, then it would actually just print out use the two string method inside element and actually print it out nicely for me. Okay, so what probably isn't so clear here is the fact that there is an association here between element and solver as well okay because because when we uh call inside solve we go say um, create a reference to problem so we might create a so for every single line in that code we're going to create a new problem object for each line in that in that input that's going in so each line in input will be reduced into a problem object Okay, and then we'll simply go refer to that reference that we've got of type problem object and say solve it for me and it will return back an element. So there's what that's why there's that association between solver and element is because problem actually returns an element when we tell it to solve. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're going to go about attacking this now. So we know that our problem class our problem represents a single line in that input. So in that input we knew that there were inside that that line of input there are two special things we're looking for and that is the the, the words or, or the sub sentence components that have the equals in them so when I send that entire string of text into the problem object so inside into the constructor of the problem object I need that constructor to go through that string and look for all the sub words that have an equals in it so one of the ways I could do that is I could simply pass that string into a scanner Okay, and then like create a scanner with that string as the argument, and then simply go through that string one word at a time using the next, 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 and then see, and then when I get each word out from that next with a scanner, look in there and see is there an equal sign. So I can use index of part of the string library, use the index of method to see if in fact there's an equals in there, and if there is an equals, well I found I found one of those subwords that can that is either my u equals something, i equals something, or p equals something. And then once I find one of those, I then simply pass that substring 
into the constructor for the element. So so I just then create an element object with that substring as the argument, and voila, I've now got an element object that represents that little subcomponent. And of course, inside problem, I'm going to do that twice. Okay, so the constructor needs to go through that sentence, find the two little subwords that have the equals in it, and from each of those, create an element object. So I have my LE1, LE2, which are the two um, element objects that represent the first U, V, or P equals, and LE would represent the second one that's in that sentence because there's always two. Okay, so that's the constructor for the problem class. Okay, so once I've got those two element objects, the uh, solve method inside the problem class. Well, that just simply needs to solve the equation. So if, in fact, it's doing a, a power calculation, well, then that's V times I. If it's doing a V, trying to do a V calculation, that's P divided by I. So it depends on looking at those two element objects that I've got and checking the types of those element objects. And depending on what types of the two element objects there are, I've got to find the third one, okay, which is what and then solve creates a new element that consists of the answers from that equation that sends back. Okay, so that hopefully made a bit more sense about what the problem class is, is kind of doing. So we've got the element class as well. And the element class, well, that's where we're going to make those little element objects. Okay, so this requires, so we'll get passed into the constructor of the element, one of those little substrings that has u equals or v equals or p equals. So if we simply extract that first character in that, in that string, then we effectively have the value required for type. And then if we find the location of the equal sign, okay, and from finding the location of the equal sign, if we then just uh, convert what's after the equal sign to the end of the, str end of the string into a number, that's effectively going to give us our value. Okay, so our constructor needs to process that little substring and rip out the type, the value, and then depending on the on the type, assign a, a unit. Okay, so if it's voltage, it's V, current, it's A, if it's um, power, then it's watts, and so forth. And then it needs to create that uh, element object. Okay, so the get value is simply going to return. So the constructor basically assigns those three fields inside the element object and then the get value is simply going to is a getter to simply return the value get type is simply a getter to return the type and get unit is simply a getter to return the unit and of course the two string will be something that produces something similar to what we had in the original input which is something like p equals something so if, it, so if this element represents power it would be p equals the value watts and if it was a, a element representative voltage it would be u equals some number v and if it was current, it would be, uh, you know, A equals some number, sorry, um, I equals some number A. Okay, so that's kind of like what the element object would have to do. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Um, I will put this, you'll probably find this UML picture up on Facebook before you watch this video anyway, but hopefully this video has made a bit more sense, so therefore I don't um, have to start from scratch. And if And if you can't make the lab, then this gives you an opportunity to be able to attack the problem at home without having without being lost for so long so i really hope that's made a lot of sense for you